guys welcome back to java tutorials and part 2 of abstract classes in the last video we have seen what is abstract classes and its implementation right in this video i will talk about the second point abstract classes contains abstract and non abstract methods let's recap what we did in the first video of abstract classes here we have a reserve bank and having two incomplete methods that's the reason i made this class as abstract in the second step I have a subclass here is access bank that extends the superclass that is a reserve bank and completed those incomplete methods here. After that, I created an object for access class and call those two methods. Now let us understand more about abstract and non-abstract methods means combination of abstract and non-abstract method. Let us have one more method here. Public void calculate interest simple formula ptr by 100 p comma p comma or are our inputs or arguments let's take p also in tgr data type t also in tgr data type and rate also in tgr data type let's do simple calculation here simple interest and p into T into R open and closing parentheses divided by 100. This is the simple interest formula, right? Here we have two abstract methods and one non abstract method. Let's do one thing here comment over this part and uh, this part. Still, we are fine with the program, right? Because abstract class here may or may not have abstract methods. Still, we can consider the class as abstract class or non-abstract class. That is completely fine. But let's uncomment out uh, one method here. Means one abstract method. Immediately, the compiler throws the error showing that make reserve bank abstract. Look, if one of your method is abstract, we need to make sure the class also abstract. That is the meaning of this error. I hope you got it now. So, so far we have two abstract and one non-abstract method. How to call that one is the, our next question. Calling of abstract methods and non-abstract method is the same way. There is no difference. But we have three arguments here. Principal amount, time and rate of interest. We need to provide those one. Suppose principal amount is 5000. Time is for 2 months and the rate of interest is for 2%. That's it. Let's save the code and run. We got this one as output. Calling or accessing those methods is same for both of that. So finally, an abstract class contains both abstract and non-abstract methods. Again, it depends on our target or goal, what we wanted to do in the program or project. In my next video, I will talk about object creation for abstract classes. So, see you in my next video. Stay tuned and happy learning.